Hey guys, this is Tim from Tim's Electronics Lab and welcome back to a new post bag. Now, as you've already may have seen in the title, this is going to be a rather expensive post bag. Maybe one of the most expensive post bags that I've ever done. So, this is going to be an interesting one. So, let's take out the knife and let's see what's inside all of these packages. So, let's start with this one to uh, keep you guys in tension uh, on what the project is about. So let's, uh, it says fence and cooling with a value of 68 cents, which is not the real value, but I can't help it. So let's open this thing up. So last on the last friday but yeah for me at the time of this of recording this video last friday i uh, accidentally published two videos that was not meant to happen but anyways you've got to enjoy two new videos on last friday i hope you like them so fans and cooling now Fans and cooling does already suggest that what's inside this thing, it's a fan. Now, it's, yeah, it's, it's a fan, oh, quite a, a different connector, but I think I do have the other end piece for this, as it looks very familiar to the um, connector set that I got with the positive and negative wire. So I don't think that this should be a problem. I was expecting regular fan header, but that isn't uh, on here. Well, spinning it like this, it generates a decent amount of airflow, which of course is what we want. It's a little bit dirty in the, at the inside. But you know, it's all about the airflow, not about the, the cleanness of this thing. So 12 volts, 0 0.7 amps. I think this is a 140 by 140 millimeter fan and I think it costs around like five or six euros. So that's uh, really cool. Now the next one, it states cop light with a value of $10. I think you might start guessing what could be inside here and what's the project all uh, going to be all about so let's extract this thing from its package it seems to be stuck seems to be very stuck so let's just do it this way you can already tell what's inside here and they did wrap this with microwave foil to keep the plastic the bubble wrap yeah wrapped but we definitely don't want to cut away the bubble wrap since that could potentially damage the part that's in here but we can cut away this foil like so now I think that you might already know what's inside this thing. I mean, yeah. It's, uh, it is a cop LED. A 200 watt cop LED. I ordered the same one as the LED that I'm currently using. So it should be the same. Let me check. Everything seems to be in the same position. So that looks all fine. I'm also hoping that the color temperature will be the same since it does look a little bit different. So let's fire this thing up and check what the color temperature is like. Uh, not much is happening. It's at eight volts. Let's put it at 11. Oh yeah, this is... Uh, working
Yeah, I think that the color temperature is about the same. So that's uh, really good. Excellent. So a 200 watt cop LED. And the description states that it's a 12 volt LED, but it only starts to shine at around 13 or 14. So 12 volts is incorrect. On to the next one. This is the most interesting one. This also states cop LED, but with a value of $19. Now that's way more than I ordered this thing for. So this is supposedly the first package that I received that states a higher value of the item than what I actually paid for. Usually it's the other way around. Like with this box. I mean I paid I think around 5 euros for this and it states 68 cents which is not correct. So this states 19 dollars which is way too high but it's still below the, the 20 or 21 euro threshold so I don't expect any uh, import fees to arrive from this thing very soon. Now you might ask why did you order two cop LEDs? Well, great question. But as you might know with a 200 watt LED, you know, and as you probably might already suggest with the fan, cooling uh, isn't provided using just the LED. So, where is the beginning of it? Oh, over here I think, yeah. You know, you actually do need to cool this thing really well. Otherwise it will just uh, get damaged and will stop working. So, I can already spot a problem. A well, problem, a challenge. Heat sink. Nice. But it fits, which is fine, it's great. But the other heatsink had a thermal pad on here. And this one doesn't. So we need to apply the thermal compound ourselves before we attach these two and hope that it will be sufficient. So re recent viewers of my channel might already know what's going on with these three things. We're going to build another 200 watt YouTube studio light. I ordered it because, you know, I felt that the lighting was good, but not perfect. I have this ring LED, I've got the other 200 watt studio LED but as you can see there are still uh, huge shadows and I think that the image quality will improve um, with a good lightning setup uh, and if I in the future switch to another camera I do want the light to be perfect but the question remains how do we drive the two LEDs with a combined power draw of 400 watts with this adapter. Now this stays a value of $12. That's not what I paid for. I think I paid like 22 or 23 uh, euros for it. But this is a 500 watt or 480. No, I think it's 500. A 500 watt. 24 volt AC to DC power supply and it should be capable of powering these two studio lights and there was also a 400 watt version but I always like to to have a little bit of headroom uh, you know if there are fuses in there that are rated for 20 amps because this thing will be drawing 20 amps at 24 volts Total no, that's not correct actually it will be a little less, but anyway 
this thing will be drawing a lot of amps and if there are fuses in there rated for 20 amps and it draws 20 amps then your fuse over time will blow so and the fans also need to be powered now they're not uh, 80 watt fans that's for sure but we do want a nice power supply now it's bent <laughs> wow this is actually bent quite a lot and it's pretty strong oh no you can quite easily bend this thing like so but this is oh you can also switch between 110 and 220 volts pretty nice this is a 500 watt 24 volt ac to dc power supply and the case is kinked look so it had a rough time coming to the netherlands so i might actually take it apart to see if it's damaged on the inside because i don't want any shorts but as i said 24 volts uh, ac in dc out uh, yeah the pcb is bent as well look we're going to take this apart before powering this thing up so again i will provide a link to all of these items in the description as usual so that if you want you can buy them and you'll also support my channel so let's take this 500 watt power supply apart QC inspected yeah going to do my own quality control if you don't mind is this the regular standard format of a power supply this form factor is in 3d printers and all those things let's check what we if we need to oh, there are two over here and i want the case to come apart but i don't want the internals crashing on uh, itself but i do think that we can remove this thing now yes exactly remove the fan there you go this is what i was hoping for now there's a fuse 2.3 amps or 6.3 sorry 6.3 amps to 50 volts it's soldered in place so that's a little bit how you're doing would have hoped to see a fuse holder NTC to control the fan speed I suppose there are three regulators over here bridge rectifier oh this is the uh, the switch for the uh, 220 to 110 regulation circuitry quite a beefy uh, it's quite an empty power supply actually I was expecting a little bit more in, to be in here but I do actually want to take out the PCB and for that I need to unscrew some of the things that are connected to the case which shouldn't be a problem I guess Assuming that I can only, I only have to disconnect this thing. Now, of course, if you are going to take this apart, please don't turn it on before you're going to take it apart because capacitors will be charged and that's, uh, that can be lethal. Yeah, there are two, oh, there's one over here as well remove this sticker 21 amps at 24 volts DC 
So I'm gonna just remove the big screw in the middle. And I'm assuming that you that it will slide out like this, but it seems to be stuck under this screw hole. And they didn't really make a cutout for that. So maybe it will come out like this. There you go. Well, there's protective things underneath this thing, which is good. But the MOSFETs are not bolted in place. They're just held in place with this pad. So that's not the most optimal way to do it. I'm just looking at these traces. You know, they can be beefed up a little, I think. The case, let's actually uh, remove this thing. Oh, they pierced it through one of the solder joints. And beef up the traces a little. Because that's... Uh, it's quite a need of a, a little bit more solder here and there. I've beefed up the traces a little, nothing uh, popped out, so that's uh, rather nice. And let's insert this board back in here. All right, that's the other. Now the screws that hold in the PCB. I'm also quite curious if the ground is referenced to earth or if it isn't. So that is the yeah the bending of the board is still there. It's a little bit there, but it's. I can loosen this thing a tiny bit, but I think it don't. Uh, it doesn't really matter. So let's put this thing back together. Plug in. Look, it's the same connector for this fan as it is for the other fan that we just uh, unboxed or unwrapped, actually. Oh, they don't. I think this is a 12 volt fan, but. Now let's insert it. This power supply is built in fan control. Yes. So the fan won't always be on. It is on if it needs to be on. So that's good. So it's set at 220 by default, which is something you always want to check because if you plug in 220 and it's set to 110 yeah magic smoke will release everything will be blown to pieces and that's uh, such a shame but overall the power supply looks decently built And I can't wait to turn it on and to see what it does. Now there is a little bit of output adjusting. There is of course a trimmer pot uh, that you can use to tweak the output a little. I'm not sure what the um, limits are, so by how much you can adjust it, but I guess we'll find out. So oh, let's also check the earthing and the ground. Check the yeah, that's connected straight through. Oh, the ground is not referenced to earth. So, 
that's a thing to keep in mind that you can't just reference this thing to earth presumably it will blow up now let's undo these thing thermal block screws we do want the earth to be connected now you can also use crimp connectors they work very nice with this style of thermal with thermal block this uh, style of connector block but i don't have those type of connectors crimp connectors laying around might order them at one time but this also works fine. I will be using my interrupter. I've got a little interrupter brick that I will be using. Turn it off and let's turn it on. Wait, get the multimeter in view before we turn it on. 24.5 that's uh, very nice it works so let's adjust the power the voltage output and see what ranges we've got so all the way from 19 dot 15 to 30 volts Whoa. and the fan seems to be connected to the output rails which isn't a problem so let's put it at 20 volts Wow, that's great. Great uh, power supply. Yes. So, uh, yeah, on the long term, I obviously still don't know how this is going to behave. And I will keep you updated on this thing. So, on to the next thing, which is unfortunately also the final thing of this post bag. That is also one of the things that I'm quite curious on, especially on how it looks. Oh, development with a value of $11.06, which seems to be pretty close to the actual value I paid for it. So, and this is the sticker that's listed on top of the package. If you're a little bit familiar, it might have already given away what this is. This is a, well, not a development board. They list it as a development board, but it actually isn't. This is a Xilinx Zinc uh, 7010 series. This is an ARM FPGA with this is an ARM FPGA, yeah, ARM FPGAs. This is an ARM CPU with an FPGA uh, in one chip. And this module uh, used to control a Bitcoin miner. Oh, and they soldered on these headers because I can see that the sticker got damaged during the process. And they didn't remove the flux. And they soldered on the micro SD card. Cool. So I guess that this is the debugging header or something. But anyway, this thing used to control uh, three ASIC modules uh, that are used to mine Bitcoin or anything else. And they are available on AliExpress for around 12 uh, euros. There are two of those ASIC cards uh, for sale, but I'm not sure if they'll run with two instead of three. 
so you could try uh, to wait for the third one and then you've got a miner for well, around 200 euros because the the mining cards are for uh, for sale at 80 euros a piece so but that's not what I'm going to use this for. I'm going to use this as a development uh, board, as the name suggests, uh, for the Zinc FPGA, because you can do really cool things with this. You can uh, control it uh, from within Linux, uh, and you can run Linux on this thing. And this uh, FPGA is also used in the Sigland SDS 1200 and 1100 oscilloscopes, the one that I've got. Uh, and it's a really cool piece of technology, an, an ARM CPU and an FPGA in a single chip. So I'll be featuring this thing on my channel. I'll be making a few videos with this thing, hopefully. And uh, yeah, I'll try to come up with a cool project for this. So yeah, that's basically it. It features 256 megabytes of RAM and a flash storage thingy that I'm not sure the size of is. There's a GitHub repository that lists all the details of this thing. It also lists the details of the mining cards. So if you want, you can uh, take a look at that. I will post the link to that repository in the description as well as the links for purchasing all the boards. Now I do actually like the matte finish of this board, uh, except for this flux region. Not sure if it destroyed the matte region or it just put a glossy finish due to the flux residue on there. So the board actually does need a little bit of cleaning, but oh, there are pull up resistors for every data line. Well, that must have been expensive to install. I'm not sure why, because there are pull up resistors on the FPGA output, so. Well, never mind. <laughs> this board is uh, definitely used, because it looks uh, quite rough. There are some uh, brown residue around the connectors over here, and the, or the crystal is, no, the crystal is not scraped off. It's matte and this crystal is also quite matte and the board feels really dirty but uh, yeah i assume that uh, this board has been used so i'll test it it's uh, powered from 12 volts so with this connector over here and there are two fan connectors I assume, two four pin fan connectors because it's ground VCC speed and PWM. So, and of course the LEDs for the uh, ethernet. There's an ethernet uh, connector built in. Oh, this is the uh, UART debugging line so for accessing the terminal that's sent out with uh, the arm cpu so unfortunately that's all uh, i've got for this mailbag um, i think i'll make another video on assembling this thing and hooking up the wires and all that stuff i'll definitely make some videos on this zinc pcb um, so yeah if you like these kinds of videos please uh, consider subscribing, like this video, share it with all of your friends and uh, oh by the way all the purchase links for these parts will be down below so you can use them to uh, buy some of these items if you fancy having them. Thanks for watching this video and I hope to see you guys in the next one. Bye! By the way I still wanted to share this clip with you. I am going to plug in the LED that I'm currently using onto the power supply. Oh, it's a lot brighter. And something is smoking. So, 
We'll definitely need some work there. I think it is the uh, controller for the uh, dimming, but we'll, uh, we don't need that. So LED is really bright. And that's a uh, yeah, little clip of uh, what I uh, still wanted to show you. Oh, hey, hello. Uh, I, I wasn't expecting you over here. Well, if you want, you can also view two other videos of me. So make sure to click them and don't forget to subscribe and like so you always get notified of my new videos.